Get Up Nation. My name is Ben Biddick. I am the creator and host of the Get Up Nation podcast, where I serve individuals, organizations, and societies to develop and sustain resilience and perseverance. I'm the co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance with former Major League Baseball player Adam Greenberg. The Get Up Nation podcast is brought to you in partnership with GotYour6Coffee.com, where Navy veteran Eric Hadley is committed to serving first responders, veterans, and their families through a variety of nonprofit organizations. No stranger to adversity, Eric has fused the necessity of coffee with his passion for public service. You're already purchasing coffee. Why not empower your coffee with purpose? Why not purchase coffee that not only has your six, but also has the backs of those who don a uniform of service for our communities and great country. Learn more about Eric and his freshly roasted, award-winning coffee at GotYourSixCoffee.com. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with Pavlina Osta. Since the age of 11, this teen radio and talk show host has been landing her own interviews with the world's top superstars, athletes, and newsmakers on and off the red carpet. She's a Guinness Book of World Record holder, has been referred to as the next Barbara Walters. She's the executive director and producer of national podcasts at Salem Media Group. You can catch her content Saturday mornings on the Pavlina Show broadcast on her YouTube channel. She's also the host of the show called If God Had a Podcast. It provides motivating, actionable tips you can use right away to create positive change in your life by managing your mind, well-being, finances, and life goals. In May, I had the honor of meeting Pavlina on Eric Mitchell's new show called To The Point and was immediately impressed. It is such a pleasure to bring to Get Up Nation, Pavlina Osta, to talk more about her new book, her per- perspectives on resilience, and how people can successfully navigate the stress and adversity in their lives during this tremendous time in world history. Pavlina, welcome to Get Up Nation. Ben, thank you so much. I love this. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. So Pavlina, really looking forward to getting your perspective on the concept of resilience. First off, will you share a little bit about about what's top of mind for you today. What's on your mind and heart? What are you focused on improving in our world at this time? Oh my gosh, there's so much. (laughs) There's so much going on right now. I am in the heart of New York City. Uh, I have been since March, (laughs) quarantine. So um, I feel like I, oh my gosh, there's just been so much going on here with, you know, between quarantine and then just like having all of the struggles that we've had as a city um, and just, you know, being New Yorkers together. Um, I feel like I've seen my very vibrant, lively city kind of crumble, which is um, very heartbreaking for me because I love it here so much. And I'm like the truest New Yorker there is like I, just so much. <laughs> so um, that has been a really tough time. And that's always, you know, that's been uh, a little thing that I've had to deal with. And then of course, with the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, This is something that I think we have been needing for a really long time. Uh, You can only, the way I look at it, um, which I don't know if that's right or not, but this is how I kind of see it, is, you know, I kind of compare it to like women's rights. You know, like uh, women were looked at as second class citizens. They didn't have the right to vote. They were looked at as objects. You know, we're still fighting for equality in certain things, but like it's the same thing for uh, the African American community, the Black Lives Matter movement, they have all of the right. And so that's just been on my mind for the past, you know, when did this start? Like a week ago or something. So that has been very present. Um, and it's also, it's just a lot mentally and even almost like physically kind of like to deal with, uh, especially being here in New York, just because it's been like Soho, which I usually go, I do my morning runs, you know, probably through Soho, or I just kind of like, I go all over, but Soho is on the route, you know, Mm -hmm. and to see it destroyed in a lot of different ways by um, certain people is also heartbreaking. It's like, oh my God, have we gone through enough? So I just feel like New Yorkers are the most resilient people. Like not only is it every day a struggle to like live here and to thrive here because you can't just like survive in New York. You won't right. make it. <laughs> you have to like thrive um, after a while. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's what's been on my mind. I just want to get out of quarantine. Everyone's already opening up. We, we're like in the discussion part of opening up. Like we're like the last to come to it because it's been such like a, a war zone here. Um, so I, I'm just looking forward to that. And then uh, really seeing where we go as a nation with the Black Lives Matter movement um, and kind of see like how it pans out. I'm just, 
I'm, I'm curious. I want to know. I'm like, this is so much history in the making. It's, it's incredible. And even the after effects of the pandemic, you know, we had 9-11. Now there's airport security. Now there's all of these different things. We have this insane pandemic that ruins our economy, does all of this stuff. What's going to happen because of that? Because there's going to be some kind of like, you know, repercussions from that. And I, I'm really, um, I'm just excited to see what, <laughs> what happens. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, all of these things we are, we're finding ourselves uh, dealing with, with so much. And once one thing happens, it's like another wave comes, and that oh totally. Gosh, I want a break. I need to go on vacation, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and uh, this also orients our focus then to the positive things. It really it really orients us to when we see, you know, the complexity of the trauma or the adversity or the stress come down, and then as resilient people say, well, refuse to you know, continue negative cycles or continue destructive cycles. And, and they come and we come up uh, collectively with solutions for different challenges. What have been some things that you've seen that are exciting for you to say, well, I'm proud of my, my country or I'm proud of my city or I'm proud of my family uh, for doing uh, in under, under the weight of this burden. What are you seeing that's, that's really electrifying in your heart and mind for, for where we go tomorrow? Absolutely. I think, um, as difficult as it has been um, through the pandemic and through even everything that's going on uh, with like the riots and like the fire, everything that's going on there. Um, I feel I'm very proud of my friends and family for keeping a very positive outlook on everything. They're like, hey, this needs to happen or, you know, this is just the beginning of what's going to come kind of thing. Um, to be quite honest, like I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself for not going completely nuts <laughs> in quarantine. Um, I am an extreme extrovert. So like all of my friends, of course, they all leave the city. They all go home to the parents. And I was like, well, I work in media. I have to work. So I go into the studio every morning. Um, but so I was just happy I didn't totally lose it, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> mentally go crazy or something. Right. Um, and I think it's very easy to... Uh, get depressed during these times and get very anxious and like I I have had a couple of days where I've uh, really struggled with that I think it's hard not to this is all very heavy stuff right um, but for the most part at least for myself I've been able to bounce back a lot I have certain things that I do to kind of keep myself from getting too depressed or like too anxious with things um, and I've been sharing those with my friends and I think they've uh, benefited from it but they've also been really on top of um, on top of their mental health as well. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know. I just think a lot of people are handling, uh, the pandemic, which is something we've never seen before. I think they're handling that really well. And then I think as far as we've never seen the country this unified over, or at least it's been a while since we've <laughs> seen the country this unified on something. We were like, we saw George Floyd's death and we were like, that was really wrong. <laughs> like what the heck happened here? So right. I'm just so proud of the country for being unified in that. And you can't go on social media without seeing something about Black Lives Matter and um, what you can do and how you can make a difference in your community or in, in society. And I think that's an incredible thing. It might, it's hard right now, but it's going to be for the better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing that we touch on here too, as people face that, that anxiousness or that anxiety, especially when we look at the news media, we can be really overwhelmed by, it. I mean, it's, it's significant change rapidly. So, so we can really see those things that are happening that are challenging paradigms or challenging things that we're used to and kind of, you know, scooting us along and be like, okay, progress is, progress is here and this is what it is. Um, and we need to really um, basically change and, and to do that in a way where, uh, when we see something that that's frightening in the media or in our lives, it then can create our, our mind kind of jumps to a future that could potentially uh, cause, you, you know, we think of all the potentialities of the future that could be frightening, that could be scary, wow. that could be troubling. And our minds are so good at taking us to those places in a way to try to protect us. Do you, I saw in some of your, uh, the media that you've created, your podcast, talk about some of the the mindfulness concepts of how one thing that's been profound for uh, me and some of uh, some of the people um, in my network, we're dealing with you know adversity as as veterans or or people are have dealing with a history of sexual assault or or traumatic incidences, 
is that mindfulness practice where it's a thing of staying in the present moment and recognizing as your mind goes into all these horrific what ifs that can increase our anxiety, uh, that if we stay in the present moment and do grounding techniques or breathing techniques, um, that that helps us remain mentally healthy in the face of so many challenges so that we can face what's in front of us right now and not necessarily all the awful things that could happen. Is that part of your practice or part of your mental health reg regimen? Oh, that's huge. That is huge. <laughs> that's like, that's what I do um, on a daily basis. So we are the only, you know, creatures on this earth that could get stressed from a thought, which mm -hmm. is kind of incredible to think about. Right. Um, no other animal out there is like, Hmm, I'm going to think about when this lion is going to chase me and then get stressed over it. Like what right. the heck, what are we doing? <laughs> so why would you do that? You know? And like mm -hmm. the crazy thing is before I practice a lot of mindfulness, um, I was constantly stressed about the future because I'm very like career oriented. I'm very mm -hmm. like, I like to be ambitious about things. Like that's just what gets me going. That's what it is, excites me. And I was always worried about the future and like if I was going to make it, if I was going to be successful with what every and accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish. And like being afraid of that is one, a waste of time. Two, it takes you away from your current, uh, what you should be doing. And it takes, it just, it just messes you up because <laughs> you're distracted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're not, you're not focusing on the right things. So mindfulness is a huge thing for me. Um, I practice yoga a lot and that sort of helps me. I'm a very ADD kind of like spastic mm -hmm. little person. <laughs> I like to like move <laughs> around a lot. You know, I like to be multitasking and just like doing different things. So sitting and meditating is still sort of a challenge for me. I try to get like 30 minutes a day in just because it is, I've watched like so many different videos on uh, the brain patterns of monks and how their brains are literally different because of meditating and how they can think critically and how uh, it's just incredible the power of meditation and like just focusing on your breath. It's something as easy as like spending two minutes a day, right? right. Just focusing right. on inhale, exhale. Uh, that's usually what I do. I do like two minutes of like meditation, like actual meditation. And then I'll do like an hour yoga practice where I am just completely focused on my mat and being grounded and, and doing that. I do it in like other kinds of workouts as well. But yoga is the one that I'm really focusing on being present and then also bringing that into the rest of my, my day and my activities. You also just being stuck in the past is a waste of time. Being stuck in the future is a waste of time to be right. quite honest. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. you can't change the past. You can't control the future. Right. Just be here. And like, you know, there's nothing worse. Like I am, I love to do lists. Okay. Like I will, be talking to someone and then I'll be like making a mental checklist. And I'm like, what am I doing? One, that's rude. Two, you're not <laughs> even paying attention. And three, like you're not fully absorbing every experience you have. Like, I think I really started to realize that when uh, I like to travel abroad <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I love to travel alone, like traveling alone is just, I get to do whatever I want. <laughs> I get to go all to, my, all, to all of my museums. I get to, you know, kind of go at my own pace, uh, which is very fast. I like to wake up very early and see everything possible and then go to bed super late. Um, most people can't handle that, I guess. And <laughs> I realized that I was like on social media a lot and I was like posting a lot about it. And I was like, I'm not even focused. Like, you know, I'm in France right now and I'm not even focused about what I'm learning in, in France. You know, I'm not like fully embracing this experience. And that's obviously like a radical uh, example, you know, but that's how I think of everything now. I'm like, I'm going to fully be present in this moment and whatever it is that I'm doing, and you'll, you're going to get more out of it. You're going to do better at it <laughs> because you're more, uh, you know, you're more in the moment, you're more focused on whatever's going on. And it's just, it's just overall better. So doing my little meditations, having yoga as a longer form of meditation, and then even uh, like completely shutting off and like taking a bubble bath or like just, you know, closing your eyes and like being in silence, like, and just kind of, it actually really helps me process a lot of my thoughts. Um, right. 
Yeah, because a lot of people, you know, you're moving really, really fast and you have a lot of different things that you're juggling, whether it's like your kids and this and this and this, you know, uh, and I just have me right now. So I don't even know how I can include other people, you know, but <laughs> uh, I just think it's so important to be in touch with everything that you're, you're feeling and be like, okay, well, this happened or whenever I get really stressed or if I'm having like struggling with some anxiety and stuff, I'm like, okay, back up. Yep. What's happening? Why am I feeling this way? What caused it? Right. Who did this? You know what I mean? Like what's going on? So I really like to know what's the source of the way I'm feeling. And I've noticed that that sort of mindfulness also has helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I don't know if that answered the question. I kind of went all over the place, but <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's 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 a, a profound um, example of mental health, a, a key component yeah. to mental health, and that's that's what I love about you know the millennial. As a lot of people are pretty, um, you know, people have there's a lot of uh, I guess you know name calling or back and forth yeah. through the different you know generations and things like that. And I I what and I always try to focus on you know the the how are we more similar than necessarily different? What do we have in common? Because ultimately we're Americans we're, or we're people on this earth. Maybe we're from different nations, but we are um, all we've got. And we are miraculous. It is amazing to be here, first of all, and then to Absolutely. be aware of being here. You know, so why would we waste our time and all the name calling and the, the, the negativity that happens here? Why don't we take full advantage of what the, each generation would take the things that were specific to their experience and learn from them uh, through, and we just miss so much glory and so much uh, insight and brilliant uh, thinking and, and brilliant uh, experiences by, by getting into that negative space where we focus on all the differences. But what I really like from the millennial generation and from the voices that I'm hearing in the, in the younger generations is that call to mental health, is that call to say, you know, we need to have more mentally healthy people. You know, there's, there are so many relationship challenges, so many relationships fail today. And we really need to have that mental health where we are able to care about ourselves, to manage our experience. Like you're saying, especially for young people who are looking, who are, a, a lot of their life has not lived yet. And so they're looking at a future and saying, what is that going to be like? And it's got to be frightening to be a young person to turn on the news and say, you know, what kind of world have the adults created for our generation? And this is what we've got. Like that, I could see why that would cause a lot of anxiety and, and uh, it really calls to us to be better. It calls to us to value each person's experience, to listen to one another and grow together. Um, any thoughts? I mean, you, you are an expert in millennial culture. Uh, what, what do you have? Uh, what insights do you have on, on that kind of concept? Absolutely. First of all, agree with everything you say. Um, couple things. Okay. So one, I feel like a lot of people don't think <laughs> like you and me. Uh, we tend to focus on the positive. A lot of people don't because it's easy to focus on the negative. I think right. it's very easy to be depressed. And I'm, I'm okay. This is coming from someone that has struggled from depression. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have struggled with that. That has always, it's always been the thing for me. Um, but now I have ways of handling it. Same with my anxiety. And I think it's a mindset that is very easy to give in to. They right. call it a battle with depression for a reason. It's a battle. You have to fight it. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Right. Um, you have to want to fight it. Like that's like the whole point, you know, yeah. same with anxiety. That's also a battle. Um, and I think with that is a lot of people need, okay, well, really quick. A lot of people need to kind of shift their focus from the negative to the positive. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. I wish we would focus on that a little bit more. Right. It's kind of a hokey cliche thing to say, but right. I wish we would focus on it more. And as far as millennials and Gen Zs, so I talk about them all the time. Mm -hmm. I am one of the older, uh, sorry, one of the older Gen Zs. And mm -hmm. I love learning from millennials because I think they're fascinating. Um, they have been put into a situation, almost an impossible situation with student debt, buying houses the right. way they want to do things, especially with social media. They're seeing, uh, you know, they want the experiences. They don't want to deal with like the typical uh, life that most older generations have gone through. Right. Focus more on mental health because of social media. I think social media has really brought out the struggle, <laughs> the struggle that, that comes with life because you're seeing everyone's, 
their highlights, right? You're seeing everyone has this perfect life. Everyone's edited. So they all look gorgeous all the freaking time. Like I'm constantly, I never sleep. So I just like, I'm constantly like, uh, editing my the bags under my eyes out of my pictures. You know, people think I sleep. It's amazing. You know, <laughs> it's fantastic. So you don't get the reality from social media, but you think that you do. So then you compare yourself and then you feel like trash and then you want, you're like, you're sad, you have anxiety, you feel like you're not doing enough, you feel like you're doing too much, you're doing all the wrong things. It's stressful. Right. And I love that we're focusing on mental health, especially because millennials sort of started this thing. Gen Zs are taking it and running with it. They're like, everything is mental health and it's the most important thing. And it absolutely is. Uh, previous generations did not focus on mental health because it just wasn't something you talked about. You yeah. know what I mean? PTSD right. was not even known until pretty recently, to be quite honest. Right. Um, talking about anxiety, talking about depression, talking about you know different disorders that people have that was a sign of weakness. I think it's amazing how certain things can change, like literally just flip their head within a generation. Like talking about mental health went from being, uh, you know, not wanting to be talked about and it's, you know, very, it's weak and, you know, you don't go to therapy. You just like suppress that and move on, honey. Okay. Tap, tap, go. Um, (laughs) and it went from that to being, we all go to therapy. Well, I haven't been to therapy, but you all go to therapy and like everyone, it's like the most thing you can talk about. It's great to talk about. Like, I love how that, that paradigm shift that happened and millennials, um, like I said, they really made it a big thing because of social media. We were all of a sudden, the privacy was sort of taken out of our lives and everyone was just sort of like out there. It's like, Oh, here, you know, my Instagram story, this is what I'm doing all day. Yep. And I think people are still struggling with that, but it's a, it's a lot better and, and we've gotten a lot further with it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's v- v- very vital, very vital for, for health today for people. And w- like we're talking about, these challenges are monumental. They're that's rapid. Right. We don't foresee them. You, we, we can never see a hundred percent. We can spend our whole life like preparing for all the things that could go wrong, but we'd spend no time living if we did that. And so you have, there has to be a level of bravery. There has to be a level of, well, you know what? I am going to take some damage during my life. I am going to deal with some adversity. Um, so I actually think the, and we kind of talked about this, I think when you came on uh, the show, yeah. tough times make tough people. I am, I will That's talk right. about, you know, my first like four years here in New York were not fun <laughs> to mm-hmm. say the least. Okay. I moved up here to New York when I was barely 18, all by myself. I was finishing high school. I was terrified. I was like trying to climb my way up like the corporate ladder, deciding if I wanted to go to college. I had no friends. Like I, it was a horrible time. And then college did not help me (laughs) at all. Like that was just like toxic friends, toxic, oh gosh, everything, you know? So I, I'm the biggest believer that tough times make tough people. And I am so happy I have gone through all of the struggles I had growing up with my radio show, being a female in a male dominated industry, being young in an industry that has a lot of older people, uh, and just being able to come through that. I'm so thankful as a kid, kids are fearless. Have you ever realized that? Kids are like, they don't give a crap. They don't care about nothing. They are just like, I, I think it's so amazing. Like when I was writing my book, Mm -hmm. which is coming out at the end of the month, uh, I was reflecting on all of these things that I did as a kid. And I was just like, I stopped doing that. Like when I moved up to New York, like, because I was just so terrified of even leaving my apartment. I didn't know where to do what, where to go, how to do anything. I was like, what's the subway? Like there's monsters down there. Like, I didn't know anything, you know? (laughs) Um, and I just think that I totally lost my train of thought, but tough times make tough people. And I think, you know, no matter how dark it gets, because it'll get really dark, it can get really dark. But when you come out from the other side, oh my gosh, it's feel, first of all, it feels so good. And second of all, you have like, you're a hundred times stronger, you know? And I feel like a lot more people need to realize that. Uh, I feel like, 
everyone in New York is like depressed for some reason. Everyone is just kind of like struggling with mental health here. And I'm not sure if it's just the, the struggle of the city, you know? Uh, and I think a lot of millennials and Gen Z's are that way as a generation, they just sort of struggle with things, you know, mentally, even though it is talked about like suicide rates are up mostly because of the pandemic, but in general they're, they're up. And I just, want more people to realize um even in veterans like every mm. single day right like yeah. that's a constant thing and it's just like you guys need to realize you've been through like the worst yeah. <laughs> you know right. and like right. the the good times like all of the good stuff is coming like yeah that i i think god has to prepare you mm. in order for you to have you have to have rain to have rainbows i love cliches i love like little sayings <laughs> like that because they're so freaking true. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. that is the most true thing. Like, I like rain. I don't love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but <laughs> rainbows are even better. And I'm like, that's exactly, that's exactly it. You just have to see like the light at the end of the tunnel with that. And I think a lot of people struggle to see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And for anybody listening to this, I just want to throw this out there. Like, if, if you're watching this right now, and you're kind of in that dark place, if you're looking for some hope, if you're looking for, you know, some some message out of all this, and this is what the message of my show is, this is the message of what we're talking about is, is everything changes. And so yeah. if you're in darkness right now, it doesn't mean it will always be this way. I just want you to understand that. And if you focus on that present moment and let go of the darkness of the past, that you know, like you were saying, so whether it's a veteran who is thinking about what they sustained in, in combat or whether it's somebody who has had a traumatic history in your past uh, or whether you're worried about all the awful things that could potentially happen in the future, come here to this moment. You know, definitely get the help you need. And if you are having suicidal thoughts, call a hotline number. Call the national hotline number. Call a therapist. Get established with somebody who can help you understand and navigate these feelings and thoughts as they come and they go. But get the help that you need. But then learn that that in getting those tools, that is what helps you to thrive. And, and that if you look at the adversity that you're experiencing right now, this is actually an opportunity for you to, like, like Pavlina was saying, grow some grit, get, get stronger, get to, you know, tough times create tough people. This is where you are able to develop that resilience, to look whatever that challenge is in the face and say, I can handle this and I will get through this. And so whether that's reaching out to a network or a friend or a therapist it's time to do that because you have a beautiful future ahead of you. We all do. And it's also powerful that when things get dark and, and destructive and, and, and frightening, that it's always just before something better and more brilliant comes out of that. And so, that is so true. yeah, I just want people to understand that, to get the help that they need to reach out. And if, if one way that you can use social media in a positive way is if under, however you're seeing this right now, whether it's YouTube or, or a different kind of social handle, I encourage somebody to tag somebody you admire for their strength or for their um, beauty or for their grace or their, their willingness to serve. Tag somebody in that and thank them for the amazing thing that you admire about them. And we can use social media not as a negative, but as something to empower us all. I just want to encourage any listeners or, or viewers to do that right now. I um, love it. Pain is temporary. Like that's yeah. something I'm constantly telling myself if I'm, if I'm doing a workout or if I'm struggling with something, pain is temporary. And even though it feels, it feels eternal, but it's, it's temporary. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see how we're doing on time. Pavlina. How, how much time do you have here? Oh, I'm chill. I got like, this is the last <laughs> thing I have to do today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All I have right. other things, but like call wise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I just want to respect your time here. I know you're a very busy person. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, so, so thank you for sharing some of the things that you went through where you had to deploy that grit within you, where you, you know, you experienced those overwhelms. But the, the coolest thing about you is the bravery of doing that. Like, like who decides, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go to New York. I'm going to be there on my own. I'm going to travel alone. And it, it's a, it's a courage. It's a bravery. It's a, it's a way of living that is, that is a fantastic example uh, for, for young people and for young girls. Um, I have two daughters myself who, uh, I love that. Yeah, she, that, they, they blow my mind every day. And I love talking with, you know, women of, of character and integrity and profound resilience um, who go out there and get it, who, who say, you know what, we live once. This is my present moment. I'm, I'm going into a male-dominated field. I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do what I was born to do. And so I love hearing about uh, people who are doing this. Um, 
I wanted to touch base with you on your book. I wanted to really help people understand where this book came from, from you, why you wanted to write it, and what it can help young people do, or, or anybody, and what, no matter what age, what can your book do to help people um, overcome their adversity? Absolutely. So my book is called 20 Things Every Motivated 20-Something Should Know. And I specify 20-somethings, but I think this is for anyone that is just a motivated person. Uh, and like I said before, I, I just like being ambitious and motivated <laughs> with things. You know, it's just like, that's just my nature. Uh, I've always just sort of liked being a go-getter with things. So with the book, it actually, it's 20 things that I have struggled with, <laughs> basically, and that I think a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of young, motivated people will struggle with. And I'm kind of like, I wanted to tell the 20 year olds, you know, I was like, you guys are probably just getting started. So here's what to expect. You're not failing if you're having obstacles or if your business has failed four times, that's not a failure. That is something to launch you into where you should be going or, you know, so I talk about the imposter syndrome, which I think is really important. And a lot of people don't know about it. Yep. In summary, it basically is where you're at a, a position and you don't think you belong there. You're, you feel kind of, uh, you're not like worthy of being in that position. I struggle with it <laughs> all the time. Not so much anymore, but like definitely used to. So I talk about the imposter syndrome, the fear of failure, the fear of success, uh, obstacle, obstacles that you're going to have. Uh, I include a lot of my interviews that I did when I had my radio show, The Pavlina Show. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I interviewed over 600 major celebrities and I talked to them about whatever they were doing. But one question I always asked is one of the chapters, which is what kind of obstacles did they have and how did they overcome it? So I go over some of those and I include some topics from there. I include a lot of studies and my podcast, I actually started the podcast to do research for the book. So I was interviewing a lot of doctors and researchers and TED Talk speakers who have done studies on, like one of them was, uh, she did a study on girls and how they lose confidence at the age of eight, wow. which is I know, like it's, it's shocking how studies have shown that girls will, they will think they're dumber. They'll think that they're ugly by the age of eight. Like that's when that all kind of starts. And it's just like, so I talk about those kinds of things. I talk about, um, man, what else? A lot of things. It's really great though. It's, I am just so excited for yeah. it to come out because it feels like, I felt like I really had to kind of come through that dark period in order to find my voice to like to kind of find like everything that we've been talking about, find everything uh, that I wrote in the book, you know, that whole journey has kind of come to, to this and it's just really exciting. So it will be coming out either the end of June or early July of this year. So 20 things every motivated 20 something should know. And then Jeffrey Hazlitt, who is an incredible uh, entrepreneur, CEO, he wrote the foreword for the book. Um, yeah, she's really exciting. <laughs> well, that's great. It's, that's what I love about it is, so this is another key point of resilience that I love to talk about is that um, people like you who are doing what you're doing, you, you go through that adversity, you experience it, you fully experience it. You don't run from it. You don't, you know, you, you, okay, I got work to do. Okay, this is troubling. You work your way through it. You learn from it. And then you recognize that it's not just you. You you know that other people are having that same experience. So you look at the adversity you're experiencing and where you had a hiccup or a, a you know or a short term little blip failure. Like I don't like using the word failure because the only way you fail is if you just give up and stop trying. Like yeah, giving up completely is the only kind of failure. Like yeah, anything else is just another stepping stone. You yeah, know? exactly. So that tenacious kind of, okay, that, that hurt, or I could have done that better, or wow, okay, I can learn from that. And then it just develops this, this and it's a deeper seated knowledge than just like alphabet and mathematics. It's a deeper, that, that, that deep core emotional intelligence type knowledge that is about experience. And then you give that as a gift. So, so then you take everything you learn, you make yourself vulnerable, you make yourself, you know, you, you're that authentic voice. Like who has time to not be authentic? Like how destructive is it to waste your time trying to be something you're not, right? Absolutely. And you know, 
I feel like in this day and age, like I'm vulnerability did not come easy to me, especially mm -hmm. like before honestly writing the book. I actually got stuck at chapter four mm -hmm. because chapter four is on failure. And my biggest fear was always failure. Huh. And like, I was trying to, I was like, trying to avoid being vulnerable. I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to get into it. Like, no, like I'm good. I'm not like, I'll say that for like the next person. But then I was like, you know what? Like, I think people need to hear this. I think people are also experiencing this because it can't just be me. Um, and yeah, that's just, that's yeah. everything, you know? That's everything. Yep. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a beautiful thing. You, you take that adversity, you're honest about it. You make yourself vulnerable to the world. And then what you do is you encourage and empower all the people who are having those similar feelings who are too scared to share it. And you can do it in a book so they're safe. It's a safe Absolutely. thing because they're not, they're not in a one-to-one -one conversation yet. They're in their room or they're in their car or they're in the, wherever they're at and, and uh, taking in that content safely to really understand, to hear that voice and then to be comforted by it. And then the inspiration that comes from them actually then living it because, and, and having that guidance from somebody who is very successful, who's very impressive to say, it's okay that you're feeling those feelings. So did I. So success, you know, continue on. Don't, don't give up at that, those pivotal moments. You're growing, stay courageous, get in the fight, get in the arena and keep being you. And then you make our world a better place. That's absolutely. And you're going to feel that. so much better too, because when you know that you've come out of you've you've gone through everything like you I have like I whenever I talk about it with someone I'm like I feel like I've walked through hell like I've literally just like walked through and I was like oh look there's the way out how nice and then I'm like out and I'm just like wow okay there's probably going to be more of that right. um right. but <laughs> I feel very proud of myself first of all because that was really hard and second of all I'm so much happier like happier than I think I've ever been yeah because I know I've gone through and I I feel like you can't really struggle from the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. nearly as much because you're like I did that like I straight up did that like all of that you know what I mean yep. so it's so much more re re uh, rewarding when when you kind of when you have to fight for it when you have to like crawl your way up yep. the tower. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's how I look at it. <laughs> yeah. You get that, that makes that hardcore strength inside you so that when anybody tries to phase you from the outside or tries to ridicule you or insult you or, or tell you that you aren't good enough or that you're not enough, you're like, yeah. no, I am. <laughs> when someone am. says that to me, which isn't often, thankfully, I look at them and I'm just like, you don't even know me back yep. up, like yep. back up. You don't know me at yep. all. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't know what I've been through. You don't yep. know what, all the struggles, all of the, late nights, me emailing people constantly to get on shows or to get interviews or do, to do this or all of the research that I've done. Like no one ever understands, but then you have like that like little satisfaction. You're like, oh my gosh, like I did that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't have the power to take that from you. They, exactly. can, they can throw those, they can throw the darts, but it, it just goes right off your back and you're just like, you know, I feel sorry yeah. for you. For, for being so <laughs> insecure or, or, you know, so negative that, or, it, you yeah. know, unhappy with yourself that you have to actually use energy in your life to try to bring somebody else down. And, you know, I feel sorry. That for you is exactly that. No, that's exactly it. Like that will take so much energy for someone um, to do that because it's like, and you must be hurting like so much inside Right. If you have to do that. And like people obviously are still doing it a lot because they think they can hide behind their, their computer screens and stuff. But dang, I feel bad for you because one, you're so negative. And two, you have all of this like jealousy. I feel like jealousy comes from thinking that you'll never have it or you're not going to, it's like you're in a scarcity kind of mindset. Right. right. And it's just like, Oh, honey, like if you just work at it, like, trust me, you'll get there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I don't think I've been jealous with, <laughs> of someone in so long because like, or even trying like comparing, okay, I still do that sometimes, but like, so I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be the best, you know, but <laughs> sure. it happens. And then I recognize it and I'm like, okay, stop that. You know, mm -hmm. but once you, you know, realize that everything is, is available to you. You just need to put in the work. I am like the biggest advocate for hard work. Like if you just like work really hard, yeah. tell me how you're going to fail. Like, please, like, yeah. can you explain right. that to me? Because right. no one in my family works in media. 
Like no one, you know what I mean? Like I didn't have any friends that understood what I was doing or why. Actually, they all questioned me. They all were like, this <laughs> yeah. is so stupid. This is so, I got like so much crap at school growing up. Like I was the radio girl. That was not a cute look guys. Okay. That was like super nerdy and it was not, it was not fun, but I just like did what I wanted to do. And like, now they now now i love this it's my favorite thing now they're all just like wow she's doing really good i'm like mm-hmm. <laughs> right. you gotta like do you and like yep. if you work hard at whatever it is that you're doing yeah. you're gonna be golden you know there's no reason for all of that like negative juju you know? yeah not at all and that's a, and that's the thing yeah it's like so you do you you it's like your response to it is go, go do you go do what you love to do because we're gonna die someday and are you going to spend your whole life like you're going to waste the time that you have, the opportunity to be alive, to experience this amazing world, to experience all of this grandeur and excitement and amazing, you know, things that are happening where positive people band together to create change. You're going to yeah. miss all that by looking in the mirror, comparing yourself. You know, nothing's ever going to be good enough. Your car's never going to be expensive enough. You're never going to have the biggest whatever you're trying to do, but you're going to miss out on living. So yeah, go, even go if you exactly even if you don't have everything you want right now like first of all check yourself because gratitude is a major thing uh at least for me it is you know like every morning i'm like i'm thankful i have my hands i'm yeah. thankful i can move my body and i can yeah. like work out because i love doing that i'm yeah. thankful you know for my apartment i'm thankful i'm just thankful for everything you know what i mean yeah. i'm thankful i have my life I, i'm thankful i was able to open my eyes and like be like oh i'm here today you know like yeah. Gratitude is everything. And when you are more focused on scarcity versus abundance, like yeah. what a waste of time, first yeah. of all. And second of all, you're only getting older, sweetie. So like yeah. Yeah. you're wasting your time. <laughs> like right. I don't I don't know what to say. You know, like that's yeah. that's it. Yeah. And in doing that, you have an opportunity. So say say there's somebody who's who said that to you. They had an opportunity to have a connection with you. They had an opportunity at some point and what they chose to do with that opportunity is to throw a dart at you instead right. just think of if they saw you as somebody who is not like somebody they needed to dominate or try to be like or try to force if they actually saw their own uniqueness and their own gifts and their own uh beauty and their own you know passion for life and they and then had the opportunity to meet you you would probably give them guidance give them positive uh, a response in some way to help them to even empower them further to be the amazing person they are. But instead that moment is squandered in this negative burst. And so I, and this is just another thing for another way to engage with the people watching this is I would encourage you, who are you jealous of? Who is it that bothers you? Break that down and then see, look at your own self and see, is it something inside myself that's creating this animosity and how can you shed that? And then think of the good thing, the good part of that person that, that is, is rubbing you the wrong way or whatever it is, and just celebrate that person's greatness. Celebrate that person's beauty, their success. Give them that gift and just take a moment to be grateful that that person is alive and uh, that you're able to actually learn from them in some way. I would just encourage listeners to do that. That's something that I think can create powerful change in our mentality. Yeah, and you never know what someone's going through like you never yeah. know their story i always think when i'm on the subway i i don't even know who i'm sitting next to like this yeah. person could have gone through literally hell and back and hell and back and you know and and i don't know so like i just be nice to everyone like i don't see any reason to to be jealous or want to compare yourself and i know it's easy to do mm -hmm. but it's just one of those things that like and you you kind of said it you sort of squander an opportunity there you could reach out to that person. So say you're jealous of them because you actually admire them and you want to be like them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you could reach out to them and be like, Hey, I love what you're doing. And I think this is awesome. And this is really great. How did you get started? How can I get into whatever you're doing? I guarantee you that they are almost more than likely willing to either reach out or help you. If they, yeah. if they see your message, I know for me, like a lot of my stuff, like all my Instagram things, they go into requests. So I try to get into them, but like, it's really hard, you know? So sure. like yeah. if they're able to see it, you know, right. um, it's incredible the opportunities that you can actually present yourself with yeah. or, uh, or what is it called? Um, a relationship that you can build with someone 
rather than just like spreading some hate you know i i just wouldn't understand that kind of mentality i don't know i just think you should be opening yourself up to opportunities that could get you to where you want to go instead of just like bashing on someone yeah you know because like you don't know what they've gone through to get to where they are and like what they're doing you know that's right that's right it takes it it takes it transforms a person's world of no to a world of yes and absolutely it, yeah yeah it can just tra- it, your entire world could literally be transformed by looking at that deficiency in yourself and refusing to allow that to be within you anymore and basically everything that you looked at or your perception of everything can be flipped in a moment and all of a sudden you realize that nobody is trying to stop you yeah and you know this mindset that we're talking about is like a daily thing i I don't know about you ben but for me like i gotta work on this kind of thing every single day because it's not easy the reason they say you have to choose happiness is because it's a choice (laughs) um (laughs) it's easy to be anything but happy i think it's very easy to focus on the negative very easy to focus on all the the crap and all the horrible stuff that's happening in the world you know, you got to work on this every day. <laughs> so people are probably listening to us and they're like, what what drink are they drinking? Because I want that, you know? <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing that's so great about it is you surround yourself with similar people with a similar mentality. It brings you back into it quicker. And it's a, it's oh, a it's so much easier. Yeah. You snap into it. Because yeah. like the beginning, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of hard, you know? But once you find like-minded people, yeah. it's so easy to like go from like a negative to like talking to one of your friends and you're like, oh, yes. They get it. You know, they understand my abundancy and stuff. Like, it's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. It's it's exciting. So I am excited for people to see and hear this because um, that's what this is all for, is for people to be yeah. empowered, to be resilient, to, to create a finer world and to transform their adversity into a thriving abundance. So, Kavlina, I always end the show with six questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guests. Will you run through these six quick questions with me? Let's do it. Is it like speed round or is it like, like answer? It's however you want to do it. Okay, we'll see. (laughs) (laughs) Who are you thankful for today? My mom. And now that we've covered who you're thankful for, what are you thankful for today? Wait, who am I thankful for and what am I thankful for today? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm thankful for my mom every day because she's my BFF. And (laughs) what am I thankful for? Oh, I'm really thankful we had this conversation because I like low-key needed it. <laughs> oh, great. Awesome. So I'm glad we have this conversation. Good deal. All right. How do you fuel the fire within you? Ooh. How do I fuel the fire within me? I don't know. It's just sort of there. But like sometimes it's not there. Um, I, you know, I really want to make all the people that have been there for me that have always tried to boost me. I really, I don't want to disappoint them. And I really just want to make them proud. I want to make my mom proud. Like, I, I don't like disappointing people. So that's usually what fuels me. <laughs> All right. And what is one thing adversity taught you to value? Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Adversity. What has adversity taught me to value? Yeah. These are tough questions. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Um, adversity. Okay, it's taught me to value happiness and, you know, everything is temporary. Like, whether I live in this apartment, I live in another, like, you know, adversity is just one of those things that if it's a bump in the road or if it's like a roadblock, you know, being flexible it's told it's about i value my ability to be flexible at this point if that makes sense sense? totally yeah absolutely it's like i feel like i can like roll with the punches i'm a chameleon in most situations now because of the different adversities so just being able to handle situations in a calmer manner sounds like you're out you know Sounds like you have profound resilience to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you doing today? You, what, are you doing today? <laughs> what are you doing today? You may have never thought you could. Wait, wait, you broke up. What? Wait, uh, you broke up. What? Uh, what are you doing today? You may have never thought you could. What am I doing today? 
Um, <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, two things. One, I've been working on my like yoga instructor certification. I never thought I would do that. And then I actually have to get like a two minute like set prepared okay. because I'm starting to do like comedy classes just like for fun. Oh, nice. I was like, let's see. I'm also like terrified. I'm like, I'm not funny. Like this is going to be horrible. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, I never thought I'd be doing either of those things. And here we are. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to see you doing stand up. That's awesome. Right. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to have like a New York accent the whole time. It's going to be great. <laughs> And what will you do tomorrow that you may have never thought you could? Oh, tomorrow. Okay, something I never thought I could. I don't know. I try not to think about things I can't do, Ben. Yeah, right, right. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. but it's something I never thought, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it at that. I never thought, there's nothing I don't think I can do. So thank nice. you. <laughs> I love it. Love it. All right. How can people learn more about you and your amazing work? Yeah, so follow me on all the social sites at Pavlina Osta. That's P-A-V-L-I-N-A-O-S-T-A. -A -A. Uh, that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I don't use Twitter, but that's cool. Um, and you can email me if you need to at pavlinaosta at gmail.com. I'll respond to you. And you can listen to my podcast, which is If God Had a Podcast. I interview, the, my motto for the podcast is a better you for a better us. So I try to talk about things you know, to better you so we can have a better society. Uh, and you can get my book, which is coming out. So keep your little feelers out for it. Uh, 20 things every motivated 20 something should know. <laughs>